21 of the Calon Yarns podcast. My name is Lynn and I'm coming to you from Cardiff in Wales in the UK and this is a knitting, spinning, sometimes crochet, sometimes dyeing but always fibre based podcast. So hello for those of you that have been regular viewers I am so sorry I've been away for so long I will explain more later. No drama just life and for those of you that are new to this show to this program thank you so much for joining us and I hope you are well. I hope everyone has a project on their knees needles and you have some time to spend with me today. So hello everyone. Apologies for my delay. I think the last of my podcasts did it was um, before Christmas I think. I was looking at my um, camera reel to try and clear my cards and get ready for a podcast and yeah I think it was the 23rd or the 22nd of December I last podcasted. So hope you had a good Christmas for those of you that celebrate. Happy New Year one and all. We're pretty much approaching Easter now so you know it is, I don't need to look at my watch, it is Thursday the 7th of April and I know that because we are going to France this afternoon. Finally we are heading over to see my dad after two years. Crazy crazy times. So yes I thought I would grab a little hour, have a little podcast. I do not know what is happening with my camera. It's not that dark here I promise you. It's actually a very blustery blowy but sunny day so I think it's time to send my camera in for a service because it is actually, in my actual eyes, quite bright in here, so I don't know what's going on. Anyway, what have I got for you today? I have got um, one, two, three finished objects. I've no idea if I start, no, I did, I did show you them before Christmas, I think. I think, I don't know. But I've got three finished objects to show you. I have a couple of works in progress and a couple of things that I am going to be casting on when I am away. So yes, without further ado, so this, what am I wearing? I hear you ask. So this is my Erstgenser, my East sweater by now, can I remember? Is it Martin Nielsen, I think? See, it's been a while since I finished it. Uh, this is my second Erst sweater, uh, and I absolutely love this pattern. It's sort of um, uh, an Aran weight, so my last one I did in uh, Rauma PT3, and this one I have done in Nutiden. It is so dark, and it's not dark in here at all. So this is... Um, New to Den, and I think it's tall bark, which I think means pine tree or something like that. Anyway, the, the colour, you can see the colour much better when I kind of come closer to the actual light in the room. It's like a real uh, brown barky colour like you would see on the, on the tree. Um, and I love this pattern. It is not really cropped-ish, quite big balloon sleeves. But it's quite a square, kind of blocky um, sweater. And I might have a green one. My green one I wear loads. And I've no doubt that this one will become a firm favourite as well. And it's... Um it's uh, it's uh, pin roving for, the, for for those of you that don't know the Nutiden yarn. It's pin roving, so it splits really really easily when you're um, knitting with it. Not splits, uh, separate breaks. The words uh, when you are knitting with it, it breaks quite easily. But if you put two strands together, that kind of gives it a little bit more support. But you just lay it back on top of each other and just carry on knitting if it does break. You start to get used to the technique, I think, of not hoiking your yarn out of your um, your uh, basket or whatever you're knitting from. You kind of keep them in the plate, so I find it easier to keep them in the plates and kind of unravel as you go. So yeah, it, it was a tricky one to get hold of. I realise I'm quite an aggressive knitter because obviously it kept breaking in those initial stages. But because it's so thin and so light, you get a, a, um, a fabric that is, the whole sweater is really, really light, but it's so warm. I'm gonna have to swap into my other finished object in a second, because uh, it's so, so warm. Um, and it kind of traps the air, and I suppose it's the closest, really, to wearing a, a, a natural sheep's fleece, a roving, isn't it, in a way, because, the, the air hasn't been squashed out of it by, by it being spun. 
so yeah it's got plenty of air in it it's super light i think i uh weight wise i did two strands together as i say two plates and this i think this whole thing weighs about 340 350 grams i bought 600 this was my first kind of uh, purchase of neutrodin so i've got so much left i could probably do pretty much a, another sweater because as i say the the sleeves are really kind of ballooned and it's quite wide fitting so yeah i might take this with me actually on holiday because mm, it'd probably be quite chilly in france still won't it um yeah anyway that's that's not a discussion for now that's later when i'm packing i haven't packed yet it's a drama oh my goodness anyway uh so i thought it'd be really great Tell, who needs to pack let's just get the the podcast done that i haven't managed to find time for for the last three months so now i decide that i have time for it on the morning of the day we leave whatever so yes love this pattern uh you could do it in any aran weight yarn you had um love the neutrodin first thing i've knitted in the neutrodin it is pricey it is expensive um it is a major treat uh, excuse me but it's um it is lovely believe the hype in a way i think it is very very nice very very soft i'm quite a sensitive person um and it is very very natural fibers obviously it's completely natural as close to to, to pure as you can get it's all dyed with natural um, dyes etc um it is swedish it is uh they're trying to keep um, ancient breeds uh, going, etc. So yeah, it's it's quite a good investment in a in a company and in something that keeps quite natural. But yeah, I will be buying more. I think once I've saved up my pennies. I think um, yeah. So this is my first finished object. I will put all the details in the links down below. But very happy with this, and this may be going into my suitcase. Hmm, it, and it, it, it's so light and it squashes up so small because it's got all that air in it. So yes, so that is my first finished object. And now I shall show you my second. I will do the rent -a ghost thing. This makes me so happy. If you're a UK uh, person and you ha are of a certain age, you'll remember rent -a ghost uh, So I'm going to do it now. I know, isn't it clever? very clever so this is my phosphine sweater uh, excuse the uh, pronunciation you don't pronounce it like that at all i no doubt but this is my phosphine sweater by inga semmingson i think i'll put it down below and i love this sweater uh i think i say that all the time but th uh, this i have worn lots and lots and lots it is a combination of color work Oop, is the light going to go funny and uh, texture it's sort of cropped but you can obviously do what you wish um the only adaptation i made what's going to happen with the light the only adaptation i made was i made the sleeves longer and put in some little thumb holes so it's got quite a long ribbed cuff on it anyway but yeah so i put in the the thumb holes because uh yeah that's quite nice and cozy and i knew i would wear this quite a lot and when it kind of comes to spring and autumn because of the the yarn i made it out of which i'll explain to you in a minute it is nice and toasty and it does regulate your body temperature really well so it's quite nice to have those longer cuffs so that if it is a bit of a chilly day you can just kind of pull it down over your sleeves over your sleeves over your hands um and if not it kind of just rolls back up and i spent a lot of time in very cold rehearsal rooms with my students rehearsing for shows and these are perfect big scarf long sleeves happy days um so yes love this uh and this is a bit of a story to this not really um but just before we went into the pandemic in 2020 i was in oslo with my friends carol and tracy i'd gone over for work and they came over to help me um and we went to varbit yarns and this pattern was up on the wall in in um leila's shop 
and yeah it was an instant oh my goodness I love that I have to make that in those colors so I completely stole her color pattern but the the white is um or the creamy color is Hilda's Varg Ask ASK I'll put it down below and then she Varbit Yarns has dyed on to this same base this kind of variegated color this greens and oranges and reds and then there's a tiny little bit um these darker reds uh which i it's only a little bit i think you need about 30 grams or something don't quote me on that i can't quite remember but it was only a small small amount if that may be so i chose a ball of um rauma pt2 no yeah pt2 i think um to kind of do those little red bits so yeah i really really like this it is so comfortable and the I've used the Hillersvarg a few times now um, and they do it in different thicknesses but it feels a little bit crunchy in the ball but it is not once you kind of wear it it softens up as you work with it it softens up when you're wearing it it softens up even more um, as I said previously I can be quite sensitive especially here on my chest but I do not have the, a problem of itchiness with with this yarn I think it's probably yeah, I think Hillersvarg at the moment is probably my favourite, favouritest yarn um, or brand because the, the quality and the thicknesses they do, it's just so cosy and um, really, really versatile and durable as well. It's, it's, a, it's a tough yarn. I've got, I think, my Chauncey sweater I did in it as well. And no, I didn't. Ignore that. I lie. Ignore that. Scrub that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have used it on a couple of things. I can't remember what else I've used it on. Oh, my husband's jumper, oh, which I need to mend actually. So maybe it isn't as robust as I think. It's him. He's a heavy sweater wearer. Anyway, um, yes, so this is this one. Love, love, love this. This will definitely be coming with me in my uh, suitcase to France. It better not be boiling now, I'll just be full of jumpers. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, you probably do this anyway. I say this all the time and you're gonna go, yes, yes, of course. So when you've got an, a jumper like this, and I've done the same on this one, um, and it's knitted in the round and blah, blah, blah. Um, I always choose then a little bit of a colored yarn to put uh, a little bit of a squidge in at the back so I can remember which side I wear it because I was so sick of putting things on and not being sure whether they were the right way round. So yeah life hack of putting that there and I know now you're all there with your projects going welcome to the party but there we are I have discovered that and it is very very useful so I'm going to fold that up and see if I can squash it in my case later we've got to share a case we've got so much stuff to get over there long story maybe I'll fill you in on some of it at the end whatever um yeah so there we go two finished objects third finished object I know thank goodness I've been away for so long there would be something wrong if I didn't have many finished objects although I haven't knitted that much to be honest it's a bit quiet been a bit quiet on the old knitting mojo but I think we're getting there now weirdly as we start to enter spring summer um, but this is my uh, everyday slouchy beanie and I think I, I've definitely shown you this before on the podcast um, it is kind of a double thickness brim, not a cuff, cuff, brim, uh, double thickness brim so it keeps your ears lovely and warm and I wonder if I can show you, my hair's a mess anyway so it doesn't really make much difference, uh, but I really, really like it get myself I haven't got my glass on because I have no idea how I look um yeah so nice and slouchy at the back really cozy around the ears and I have done this in um um Fruval Borg's uh halo I think is it called silk halo something like that it's my fringe mess um and it is incredibly soft it's got like cashmere in it cashmere and silk I think uh, oh, what a treat. And we've been away a couple of times this year already down to, to Devon. Um, and it's been very, very windy, 
cliff walks and this has been so cozy so yes that has been a very much used uh, project this year already um so yeah oh i've gone very dark again now Ooh, it's, yeah it is quite dark outside now the clouds have been blown across anyway if you can still see me i, I am still here um so in terms of um was I going to say anything about this? No, I've told you what I knitted it out of. I told you about the cuffs. Um, told you about the yarns. And all the details I'll put below. So no, I think that was it. So yes, on to works in progress. So, I am doing, and I'm just kind of thinking where the actual book is. I am doing, um, it's called, I don't know if you've seen it. Let's start again. Let's start again. And rewind. Um, the Shetland Wool Journals, I think that's what they're called. Oh, it's here, it's here, it's here. Oh. These wool journals, these books, uh, I think this is number two. Yep, yeah, number two. And they are so lovely. Uh, they're fairly new-ish, I think. Um, but they have some beautiful, beautiful patterns in here. And there's also a bit of history about the Shetland Isles, uh, about some designers. Uh, it talks about different bits and bobs. So it's a nice magazine, I'd say, a proper, no, a proper journal. Ah, it's called a journal. A proper journal of uh, history, of information, and of beautiful patterns. So uh, one that caught my eye was, um, I can find it. It's called the nut. Oh, recipes in here as well. It's called the Night Hawk pattern shift. There it is. Night Hawk slipover. Isn't that pretty? See and dark. So yes. Come on, am I going to come back? Uh, so I decided to have a little go at that. <clears throat> I really like a tank top, we call them tank tops. Uh, I really like a tank top, um, but I don't think I've worn one since I was about 11. So I thought, right, I'm gonna have a go at that. So I'm gonna get my basket because there's quite a lot of colors and, and whatnot in it, but I would uh, do it out of stash. If I get closer, does it make a difference? I do apologize. Um, I'm gonna do it out of stash. So what I did was, as I was kind of looking through my stuff, I found that I had quite a lot of bits and bobs of, um, hand spun that was sort of in the same color palettes as they were looking at so though that pattern is mostly done in um uh not jameson and smith jameson of shetland is it called um i'll pop it down below so i had a little look on the website to see what sort of color shades they were and they're not solid colors so they they do have like a, a variegation in them which is perfect for hand spun because a lot of my hand spun is like that. It's kind of variegated to a certain extent. For example, uh, this one, you see that's my hand spun and it's kind of blues and golds in there. Uh, and this one, no, not that one, this one, which is kind of uh, oranges and um, blues as well and greens and reds in there. So I sort of found stuff from a lot of my hand spun that sort of matched up in terms of tones. Um, and this is how far I have got. So I am, oh, it looks quite good on camera actually. <laughs> it looks a little bit neater on camera than it does in real life. So yeah, so this is as far as I've got. And it's kind of, you know, it's not a bad match because I really like the colors in the, in the journal. So I was trying to kind of match up as much as I could. Um, yeah, and it has worked up really, really nicely. It seems rather big, but that's okay. That's fine. It doesn't matter. If, if I can't wear it, I'm sure my, my husband will grab it. Um, but it's been really nice to use up real bits and bobs. I have no idea whether I'll have enough because it's really kind of difficult to measure exactly um, hand spun. It, well, it's not difficult, it's just laborious. You've got to kind of measure it out. So 
who needs that sort of stress in your life? It's just better just to see, just to, just to hope it works out. I mean, that's far better use of time, isn't it? So yes, but I do think the, the pattern is a lot longer than I would normally want it. And from the picture, you can see that it kind of comes down beyond her, her bum, her bottom. So I think I'll probably make it shorter. So I, th I think I've worked out in the pattern what chunk I can take out to still keep on track with how it shapes up with the shoulders and hits the pattern and so that there's a, a join on the top that you can't really see, things like that. So, um, so yeah, pleased with that. And I think maybe with that taking out of a significant section of the color work that I will probably have enough. I haven't got sleeves, so you know, we're onto a winner there. Um, but yeah, so that is the Nighthawk Slipover, <coughs> excuse me, by, um, Wilma Malcolmson, beautiful. But do check this, the Shetland uh, Journal, Shetland Wool Journal, Shetland Wool Adventures Journal. Really, really nice stuff in there. Um, I'm just gonna stop my camera a second because I know the battery's gonna run out. Bear with. Hi, I'm back. So yes, so a little basket of, of shenanigans. And actually, I've remembered I've got this in here. Look at this lovely uh, bag that my wonderful friend Carol made me, a little sock bag. Um, and this, and look at this lovely little charm on it, some socks. So you see this actually is a cautionary tale. Um, I won't go into it because it's not my story to tell. Oh, I forgot I had that yarn in there. Anyway, sidetracked. Um, this was a, Oh, what's the what's the name of the colour work designer? Like this thousands. It's not gonna come to me. Anyway, oh is it? No, it's not. Um so this was a colour work sweater that she was working on. Beautiful. Look at all that absolute joy. Um had a bit of a brain fart. Uh steaking sleeves, I believe it was. Really didn't go well. Um, got a bit cross and uh, threw it in the washing machine, felted it up and made myself, herself and our friend Tracy some beautiful bags. So you see, there is always a silver lining from disaster. When disaster strikes, what a talent. So thank you for that, Carol. That is absolutely beautiful. Um, yes, so that's the kind of the major ongoing project. I'm not going to take that with me on holiday, even though it would be a nice one to do. There's not enough room in the car. Uh, so yes, so what are my plans? Oh no, actually. And another project I've got on the go is a, just a pair of normal vanilla socks, Berger de France which I love as a sock yarn. Bourget de France, uh, Gumi 50, I think they're called. Um, they come in 50 gram balls. So yes, knitting this up. Although I think, I think I've knitted it on two smaller needles. Why does that happen? You know, you knit with something for ages and ages and ages. And then all of a sudden, you know, I've knitted with, with Gumi 50 for a long time. Got loads of socks, love them. And then for some reason you go, I tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that yarn that I, I work with loads, love, um, and change the needle size. Why, why would you do that? It's just really weird. So what I have now is actually quite a stiff pair of socks. So am I going to take it back and start again? No, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll just see what happens. Um, so yeah. And it's so stupid because, because I'm actually not enjoying knitting on them because I'm like, mm, the fabric is really stiff. So what I'm going to do clearly is punish myself and complete this sock and another sock in an aggravated way rather than pull half a sock back. And now I say that out loud I sort of realise that that might be quite 
stupid. <laughs> so maybe I should just pull it back and use the size I normally use. I think I've got on a, a 2.25. Um, and normally I use a 2.5 on this, I think. That's a really, really stupid thing to do, isn't it? I've got loads to go. Why am I doing it if it's not nice? Yeah, I'm going to put it back. You're absolutely right. Okay, I'll do that. Something else to do before I go. Oh my goodness. I'm never going to get this ferry. Um, anyway, I've got to edit this, put it up on YouTube. What am I doing? Oh. Um, so anyway, uh, projects to do. So first project to do, oh no, I'll show this one first. Uh, I was saying to uh, my friend Carol the other day, who was, who was asking me, have you got any, like, have you knitted any summer tops and things? So my answer to her was yes, yeah I have, but I never wear them. Ah, she said. So what I've decided to do is cast on a summer top. I don't, I don't know what I, I've just told you I never wear them however excuse the crinkling so I am going to do it's a little kind of vest have I got the pattern yes I have uh, saw this on Ravelry um, and thought oh that's quite nice um, can you see this no it wasn't on Ravelry actually it was on Instagram um, just a little camisole camisole number four uh, can't remember the name i'll put it down below if not i'll, I'll catch up with you later because i'm not sure i'm a bit worried about time now and finding these links um so it is done in um a silk and i had in my stash some uh silk garden sock are they called silk garden sock let's have a look some noro i haven't worked with noro for ages it was really really popular for ages wasn't it and then it kind of went quiet i don't quite know um seku maybe so this is the um label can you see so i've got four balls of it and they're all sort of different colors so there's two here i did a swatch i know me what's going on i did a swatch to see if i could put these two together and it would give me the gauge i needed and it does and it gives quite a nice little um colorful but not overly colorful texture and it's um it's sort of not a twisted rib, but it's um, it's like an interrupted rib. So it's not a full rib. It kind of gets interrupted every now and again, which kind of gives that checkerboard look. So, yeah, so it's really nice. Uh, I've got four balls of this, so I think I should have enough. I think I should have enough to make myself a summer vest that I will probably never wear. So, again, a good use of time for me. So that one excuse me, is coming with me to do, because that'll be quite small. And then the next one I'm going to do is uh, a bobble hat. So from the sublime to the ridiculous. So it's just a basic uh, chunky bobble hat pattern. I won't kind of dig that out. I don't think even I've even got it printed. No, I think it's just a few instructions on my phone. So that I am going to do out of a range of, this was the colour for my last Erst sweater, the PT3. This, I think, I don't even know what that's from. I think that was a random ball I had in my stash. That is some um, Istex Let Lopi. So there's some bits and bobs, greens, blues and greys. Um, and I'm going to wear, uh, make myself a bobble hat. Now, the reason why I'm making a bobble hat and Carol and Tracy are also making bobble hats, is because when we were away uh, in Devon in January, um, people were wild swimming. Were they, are they wild swimming? Is that wild swimming is sort of in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? Well, they were, they were swimming in the sea when it was freezing, whatever that's called. Madness, probably. Um, but you go, oh, that actually looks quite fun. And you only go for a quick dip. You know, and I know people in, in Europe and especially Scandinavia do it all the time and it's kind of finally eking its way onto the muddy shores of the UK for its mental health benefits and its physical benefits, etc. So we were like, oh, we should do that. But obviously to do that, you need a hat. It, it's impossible to do it unless you have a very specific hat. So if we take a long time to knit these hats, then it'll probably be the summer and it'll be a bit warmer and 
and that will be a better starting point. So yes, so we have decided that we've all got to make these um, wild swimming hats uh, and then we will be able, we'll be so warm going into the sea in our swimming costumes, not wetsuits, swimming costumes, um, because you know, everybody knows that actually if you wear a hat it keeps the heat in, so that sounds like pretty solid advice for me. So that is another project that I'm going to be taking away with me because when we come back, um, we come back towards the end of April and the last weekend in April is Wonderwall Wales. Yeah, we're back. Three, two, one, we're back in the room. So obviously it's been cancelled, cancelled. Uh, it's been cancelled for the last couple of years um, and finally it's back. And I think it is the best fibre festival in the country. I dare say the world. It's so lovely and it's on the Royal Welsh Showground, which is in Llanelwith, which is just outside Bilth Wells. Last weekend in April, as I say, so the 23rd, 22nd, 23rd, something like that, because the, the next weekend has one of the days in May. So it has to be the last weekend in April. That's when they do it. Um, yeah, and it's just the best. It's, like I say, it's on the Royal Welsh Showground. So that is um, like a farming, farmer's showground. So it's in barns and uh, it has some livestock there as well. It has spinning, it has knitting, crochet, general fibre crafts, lovely food, amazing fibre artists. The guilds go, the spinning guilds go, um, lots of different independent dyers, makers, creators. It's just fab. It's really, really lovely. Um, and yeah, it'll be the first time we're back to do that. So uh, what was I going to say? Don't know why I said that other than excitement. Ahoy. Um, and yeah, must save some pennies to be able to splurge at Wonderwall. Um, so yeah, so project on the go, finished objects, things ticking along. Uh, so that's probably all the knitting bits and bobs. I think I'm just looking at the scattered mess around me thinking when's the ferry oh lord i'm packed the car i'm packed i think i think i've got enough clean pants so oh, it's it's just exhausting um yes so that's all that so that's all the knitting content i think so if you are leaving me here apologies for the kind of the the randomness the chaos the dark uh but i will send my camera away i think i'm not i'm not sure what's going on there um, yes, yeah, so if you're leaving me here, I will hopefully catch up with you a little bit sooner. Like I say, we've got Wonderwall Wales uh, at the end of April. I'm away now um, pretty much until then. Um, so hopefully I'll give you a bit of a, a roundup, a catch up after Wonderwall um, and let you know whether we've been wild swimming. So yeah, if we take our hats to Wonderwall, there is a stream near the place that we're staying. So maybe we'll, maybe we'll go in for a dip watch this space um yes so if you're leaving me here thank you so much for joining me if you are staying for a bit of uh life and general stuff um then yes so what have you guys been up to it's been a long time eh um yeah christmas went well uh it's always a really really busy time isn't it, it i know it seems like years ago now but i always kind of think when you're the if you are the production manager of Christmas, it can be quite a stressful time. And for me, I don't really get my head back above the parapet until about mid-January, if I'm honest. So, um, sorry, my camera did a weird thing then. Um, yeah, I don't really get my head back above the parapet until mid-January. And it's weird, isn't it? Because we kind of consider Christmas, if you celebrate Christmas, to kind of be that, um, family to spend time with family spend time with friends uh relax nice food nice drink all that stuff and it is that it is all those things but when you are the production manager of christmas uh it's really quite stressful and you and you have to kind of do two things don't you you have to to be on it like prepared 
all the food, all the shenanigans, who's coming where, when, how many have you got for dinner on that day, this day, the other day. And then somebody might pop in and, oh, that's lovely, of course, you must come over. What time will you come over? I'm not sure. Okay, so what do we get in for that event? And, oh, is it okay if so-and-so comes in? Well, yes, of course. Uh, oh, have I got enough cheese? Um, blah, 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 blah. So there's, a, there's always an underlying um, stress and tension, isn't there? Whereas the... The swan bit on top is going, oh, Christmas, this lovely time of year to relax and spend time with family and friends. And then underneath you're going, have I got enough cheese? Is there crackers? Have we got the Viennetta? Well, we're not having Viennetta. Why are we having Viennetta this year? Okay, we'll have Viennetta. And, and then your children say things like, um, oh, God, Mum, you know, Christmas dinner is always the best. And you're like, oh, God, pressure. Um, can we just have sandwiches? Uh, yeah, so it's all that stuff. Oh, why haven't you got this? Oh, you usually get that in. Why haven't you got that? And ah, uh, so yeah, so it's not until January really that you go, oh, okay, we did it, we made it. I think January, early January is the time for the Christmas production managers to chill out because you're like, there's enough food in that fridge and freezer to just sort yourself out. Um, and I will be sorting myself out and I will be having some quiet time. Uh, and as wonderful as it all is, you do need that kind of decompress in January. And the reason I mentioned that was because I never really get to see my friends in that December and run up because everybody's doing their production managing for their families, friends, etc. Um, so we always kind of gather in January and this year we went uh, to Devon for a weekend towards the end of January and it was lovely it was just that oh okay we made it and there were there were times when we were away where we just sat in silence and knitted because the whole build up of christmas and the other side of christmas is so so frantic that it was just so lovely and we were lucky when we were away it was um dry it was freezing but it was dry so we were able to do some nice walks and just have you know, ch uh, dinner from the chip shop and um, one of, uh, Carol brought some nice food that she had made, so we kind of had that one nice, and it was just really, really relaxed. And I think actually that's what we need to go for us, us production managers of January is kind of have a little bit of a time away to go, we, we did it, we made it, and it was a nice time, and now we can be still and be quiet and do some knitting. Um, so we did that in January and then obviously term starts, I teach in the university, term starts early January so again that kind of uh, the ball starts rolling again and it's busy 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 so January, February, March uh, and here we are at Easter, Easter break so we broke up on Friday we as lecturing staff don't really get holidays in that way. The students get three weeks off, but we have to kind of book bits of holiday because there's still stuff for us to do, marking and all that stuff. So I've managed to get um, just over a week um, away. So yes, finishing up bits and bobs this morning, as you can see. Um, and then what time are we on now? Oh, we're doing okay. Um, and then, yeah, away, away for uh, a little while. See my dad in France. We have a, like a caravan out there, myself and my brother. We had a caravan, but it was really, really old and kind of falling apart. So that one, uh, we got rid of that one, sort of, um, when was that? Yeah, it must have been mid lockdown, but we weren't kind of able to go over and sort it all out. So my dad kind of took all the stuff out of it and put it in this other caravan that we're, we um, bought instead together. So it is an absolute tip, chaos, loads of stuff in there. So that's why we're heading out to kind of sort that out. So it won't be too much of a relaxy time, but it will just be a way and sorting out everything ready for us to be able to go out there in the summer. But it'll be great to see him. I haven't seen him for a very, very long time. Um, yeah, uh, what else has been going on? Family are well. Um, my daughter comes home, moves back home middle of May. So that'll be like here before we know it. Um, and we'll be back to a full house. Ugh, crazy. My son is still here, obviously. Um, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You get, you get a gap. If you've got children, are going to university uh, this year 
those two or three or four years that they're away, you enjoy because they they come back um, and it it's like they came back and they'd only been gone 20 minutes. Um, yes, so enjoy the time because uh, all of a sudden you'll have a household full again and your fridge will never be full and there will always be stuff uh, to tidy up and put in the dishwasher. Anyway, we won't go there. Um, so yeah, I think I have babbled on enough. Well, look, it has been lovely to catch up with you. Once again, apologies that it's taken so long for me to get back on track, but I kind of tried to, to regroup. We've tried to, to reclaim our weekends and not stay in the house to, to kind of go off and do things. And because I podcast at the weekends, that's generally uh, because I work away from home in the week. So yeah, weekends, we're trying to, to um, what's the word, to, I don't know what we're trying to do. Use them wisely, use them effect mindfully, effectively, and do stuff. So yes, haven't really been around much. We've been off uh, visiting and exploring and off walking um, to various places around and about. So yes, that's what we've been up to. Um, so I will catch up with you soon, hopefully, have a rundown on Wonderwall. Um, if you're there, if you're going, do grab me and say hi. Shall I wear this? I don't know, I might wear my brown one. Who knows, it might be a chilly one. You can never tell with Wonderwall, that's the thing. I've been there and it's been baking warm and I've been there and it's been absolutely freezing. So who knows, we'll decide when the time comes, but I'll have my woolly hat, so it'll be fine. Um, I'm going to stop now. That's all from me. Uh, lovely to chat with you all and I will catch up with you soon. Take care, keep well, hold out, bye.